Hello, Facebook friends. It's Carla, your online doctor, with today's Live in Five. Today's Friday. It's April 12th, exactly at 5 p.m. And I am at my friend Marla's house with Cecilia. We are having a party. So, we're going to make this short and sweet so you guys can get to your weekend and I can get to mine. So let's finish off this week. Hello, Slobodanka, how are you, honey? So let's finish our week of screening talks. And today we're gonna talk about screening your hearing, hearing screening. Now it is estimated that 15% of adults in the United States have hearing loss. As hearing loss increases with age, 5.5% of adults between the ages of 18 to 39 will have hearing loss. But as they increase to 19, uh, to ages 40 to 69, that percentage goes up to 19%. And then as you get to the age over 70, the percentage is 43% of people will have um, hearing loss. And that's without the use of a hearing aid. So this is a significant problem that we have as we age. Now, without intervention, hearing loss contributes to higher rates of depression, anxiety, and other cognitive disorders. Now, there's a strong correlation that has been found between hearing loss and the risk for developing dementia, okay? The U.S. Preventative Task Force acknowledged that many Older adults may not recognize the early stages of hearing loss, which is why we need to screen. Most of us know about the association of um, decreased hearing with the elderly, but other risk factors include chronic health conditions such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and kidney disease, disorders of the ear and of any kind, medications that are some actually that are used to treat cancer, infection and pain, occupational or recreational noise, head trauma, history of ear infections, stroke, and more. So there's a lot of different things that can actually contribute to hearing loss. Now, a comprehensive screening uses a three-pronged approach. Number one is screening for health conditions. So you review the medical history, the family history, medications. You, met, you check and do an ear exam using an otoscope, a special scope to look inside the ear. The second prong is screening for impairment. So that includes the use of calib a calibrated pure tone signals to identify the loss of function. Okay, so in that, that's the one, you know, we used to put the headset on and you'd raise your hand, you hear it in your right ear, your left ear. That's really important. And then the third part is screening for disability. That is a self-reported questionnaire to identify any perceived difficulties that you may have in hearing. Okay, now the second part, the hearing tone, is the one we all remember as kids when we were in school. Okay, so that's really important that you you remember to get that part done. Now they have set levels to ter determine if you pass or fail. Specific hearing loss in excess of 25 decibels, um, sorry, can negatively affect communication and therefore reflects a clinically significant hearing impairment. Now some clinicians advocate for, uh, for the use of hearing screening um, for 30, 35, or 45 decibels when screening older adults. Now this will result in a lower fail rate, but will miss milder degrees of hearing loss and early intervention. So the 25 decibels, in my opinion, is actually better. Now referrals for further testing can follow any of the three levels, positive findings on the otoscope exam, failed pure tone screening test or scores outside the normal range on the questionnaire. Now, there's limited information as to how often adults actually follow up with recommendations to get a hearing aid or auditory rehabilitation, but we still have to screen and make those recommendations. Overall, the recommendation is a baseline hearing test at age 21, and then every 10 years until you are 50, and then they recommend after 50 screening every three years. Okay, so if you haven't had a screening test done in a while, you're probably due. So, on that note, you may be able to hear my company and everybody in the background. I hope you do, because that means your hearing isn't too bad. But I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend. And we'll be talking about some fun stuff in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned, and I'll see you on Monday.